This past week, Vermont Secretary of State Jim Kondo certifying primary election results. The initial canvas was postponed because of technical issues with the software used. They've been using the same software since 2018, but this is the first time it's been used since redistricting. That's required every 10 years based on new U.S. Census data. Kondo says the delay did not impact his confidence in voting totals for all candidates. Elections should be accurate. They should be safe and secure. And our goal was to make sure that those numbers added up, that they added up correctly, that they were assigned to the right place. And this morning, we are taking a closer look at Vermont's U.S. Senate race. U.S. Representative Peter Welch claiming victory as a Democratic candidate, while Republican newcomer U.S. Army veteran Gerald Malloy defeated former U.S. Attorney Christina Nolan. Gerald Malloy, thank you so much for joining us for NBC5 In-Depth, and congratulations on your primary win. Thank you, Alice. Thank you very much, and thank you for having me back on NBC5. So did you expect to pull off the win against Christina Nolan, and how did you pull it off? I was confident, and it was really hard work, and I had a great team uh, that assembled behind me, and volunteers and my team and my wife, Stacy, and uh, people stepped up and did a great job. And so I was, I was confident, but it was a lot of hard work, and really it involved just engaging Vermonters across the whole state. So you say that you are a conservative Republican and a Donald Trump supporter. Now, back in 2020, he lost Vermont by a huge margin, so that seems like a tough sell in this state. Mm -hmm. Well, it's 2022, and I'm I'm really most interested in my campaign. Uh, I did vote for President Trump uh, in 2020, uh, but that's in the past. I'm looking forward to uh, support, supporting Vermonters and, and serving Vermonters uh, in this race. Um, and I, I think it can be done. Desert How do you here. feel about um, the former president taking boxes of classified information to his home? I'm waiting to see what comes out of the whole uh, Mar-a-Lago uh, incident. Uh, we'll, we'll see what comes out of that. And there's a huge debate over this investigation about whether or not to defund the FBI. How do you feel about that? I don't look to defund the FBI. I do look for the FBI to have justice equally across uh, everyone in the country. And of course, he is a former president. I think there are some other uh, investigations ongoing, you know, kind of relative to this, well, including Hunter Biden and 10% you know, for the big guys. So we'll see how that goes. You know what Peter Welch is going to say about you, your opponent come November. And I'm thinking about your positions about abortion, no exceptions. And this has always been a pro state, pro choice state. So how will you win voters over? Well, actually, going back to my interview with uh, Stuart Ledbetter, I've said actually since day one of my campaign, uh, I am pro-life. That's my personal uh, choice and, and religious uh, belief. But I've said uh, I also believe in the Constitution. I served 22 years as an active duty officer supporting and defending the Constitution. And my belief was that uh, per the Constitution, the Tenth Amendment, uh, that right, not specified elsewhere belonged to the states respectively and the people. And I said that back in March and that is what happened. So it is a, a abortion issue is at the states right now. And I've explained that, you know, as a Vermonter, that will be how I will impact you know, my views on, on that uh, with my one Vermont vote as a Vermont voter and who I select uh, to, to vote for and including for, uh, I will be voting against Prop 5 and Article 22. All right, let's talk about the Inflation Reduction Act. So recently, President Joe Biden signed the $750 billion bill into law. Do you think that Medicare should have the same power as the VA to save people money? What uh, a couple of things that concern me about the Inflation, Inflation Reduction Act, uh, first off, is that it's actually government getting involved in competition uh, in industry, so to speak. And I'm leery of that. I believe we should have an open market and capitalism. And anytime you have a government involving in, in uh, setting prices, for instance, uh, I, I don't agree with that. Americans are paying almost three times what Canadians are paying for the same pill that they need to survive. What do you have to say about that? I think over time, competition will lower the costs. Are you on board with transitioning the U.S. away from fossil fuels and toward renewable energy? I'm on board with uh, several things. I would like to pursue independence for the United States across 
oil and gas independence, future energy independence, critical technology independence, and food independence. Now with oil and gas, uh, I do not approve of President Biden's day one uh, executive order where I call it his crusade uh, to kill the oil and gas industry. That has inflicted hardship on you know, almost every American. And that's why we have four, five, six, seven dollar oil prices and gas prices, and we're heading into winter. So I, I did not approve of that. Uh, I think I, I am in favor of what I call reevaluating our future energy plans. And I've talked to many times about this that uh, right now uh, we have to focus, and even getting back to the Inflation Reduction Act, I think, uh, you know, spending $369 billion on the climate, uh, we could have probably spent money better elsewhere. Uh, the, one of the main issues that we have to look at and develop a plan for, a viable plan, that every American understands the cost of that plan, but we have to look at the resources. So right now, in terms of lithium and cobalt and, and nickel and copper and other, other resources, the United States does not have ready access or own those resources that, that we will need to transition to future energy. So that, that's sort of step one in my book and also involving industry. I don't believe we need to give industry subsidies uh, uh, to, to develop that. Again, it goes back to uh, economic freedom. Uh, that, that's what's gonna drive an innovation from America. America's always led the way in innovation. Uh, that's, that's how we'll get to future energy, uh, uh, which, which I do want, but I don't think it's right to kill the oil and gas industry uh, right now. We had oil and gas independence, and we actually had a, a trade surplus, and we don't have that anymore. And that is the reason uh, why the high, high gas prices right now. Um, let's talk a little bit about COVID-19. You have said that you are not vaccinated against COVID. Will you get vaccinated against COVID? I'm not planning to. That was my personal choice. And was there a reason why besides it being a personal choice? Uh, well, it's just my, my personal choice. I was in the Army. I've been vaccinated uh, by many, many, many times, including anthrax. But I decided uh, to go with the natural immunity route. I also have some issues with with the vaccine in terms of you know, being pro-life and its relationship to uh, abortions. What kind of campaign will you be running for the next eight weeks or so until the general elections in November? Sure, my, uh, my strategy is really gonna change much. I've been doing boots on the ground. I've been to all 14 counties engaging Vermonters. And it kind of goes back to what I've been doing in, in the business world is engaging and listening. And, and I've worked you know, as a US Senator developed value solutions uh, for to serve Vermonters. But continuing that, uh, meeting Vermonters, uh, they are interested in, in my platform, which is get back to abiding by the Constitution and promoting economic prosperity and ensuring defense, security, and order. I have 42 years of relative experience to, to accomplish those, and Vermonters are excited about it. And every day I go out and meet folks, and it doesn't matter what party they come, uh, they're from, I'm getting all, all different parties uh, jumping on board, and it's exciting. All right, Cheryl Malloy, thank you so much for joining us for NBC5 in depth. May the 14 stars shine bright and make God bless America. Thank you. Now, Malloy and Welch will be going head to head in November's general election to replace U.S. Senator Patrick Leahy, who will be retiring next year. Representative Peter Welch first elected to represent Vermont in the U.S. House in 2006. He's serving his eighth term. Ahead of November's general election, Welch says, quote, we have to do all we can to ensure Vermont maintains its strong progressive representation in the Senate. And that means we need to fight to protect women's reproductive freedom, our climate, our imperial democracy, all while making sure we're lowering costs for Vermont's working families. Now, Welch says he's committed to working hard and is looking forward to campaigning all over Vermont. The general election is on Tuesday, November 8th, and you can go to our website, mynbc5.com, for all of your commitment 2022 news.